Hi everyone, this is Andrew Novins, and this is the fifth video in a series where we talk about how to take our MicroStation models out to the Unity game engine and then from there to the HTC Vive virtual reality headset. As with the other videos, uh, watch it in conjunction with the written tutorial that I've posted on Bentley's MicroStation visualization uh, forum. And so in this video, we will talk about how to set up the lab renderer from Valve and then how to set up our directional light as the sun. So here we are in our Unity project, as we left it from our last video. Uh, one of the things I forgot to mention is that we should period periodically remember to save our scene. Um, so as we change various parameters and add components, uh, just make sure to save the scene periodically. But before, before we start configuring the lab renderer, the first thing that we need to do is go to Edit, Project Settings, and then uh, Quality. And so since we're not going to be using the standard Unity shader that generates these shadows, we, we're going to be using the lab renderer, we need to disable the standard uh, shadows. And so we come down here to the shadows section and just disable them. And you can see here the shadows are now gone. Um, so now that that's done, we will come down to the lab renderer plugin, go to the scripts folder and apply this valve camera script and so this needs to be applied to the camera rig uh, camera head and then camera eye so we'll just drag and drop that onto the camera eye and then just have a look at some of those settings so click on the camera eye over here and then we have some settings here um, most of them are okay uh, here the clipping planes, the near clipping plane and the far clipping plane are set okay. Um, my project in this case is about a 300 meter square for this ground plane. So I figure why not set the far clipping plane to about 300 meters. Um, as good as the valve lab renderer is, one area where it does, doesn't compare as well to the standard shader is the resolution of the shadows on large sites. Now, 300 meters is not a terribly large site, but you know it's average. So you end up having slightly fuzzy shadows uh, as a result of a low uh, texture map, shadow texture map. So over here in the Valve camera settings, we have a shadow texture width and a shadow texture height, which by default is set to 4K. So I've been setting that to at least 8K to try and get better shadows um, and now the the next script that we need to apply is this one here the valve real-time script and this gets applied to all the um, real-time lights in your scene uh, we only have the one the directional light so I'll just drag and drop that onto the directional light and let's just have a look at some of the settings now there, there are plenty of settings here that we can play with um, but we We'll do that later when we uh, look at more issues with the directional light. For now, we need to finish configuring the lab renderer. So the next thing that we need to do is to convert all of these materials to lab renderer uh, compatible materials. So if we go to our FBX folder, go to the materials folder and then go to the ground material, you can see here that our materials are using the standard shader materials that come with unity um, so it's using the standard shader here what we want to use is the lab is the valve vr standard materials so we have an automatic way to upgrade all of these materials so we simply go to the to valve uh, shader dev and then down here we have convert all materials to valve shaders so we'll just click on that and it just takes a few moments And now you can see um, we have the beginnings of shadows here, which we will tweak and, and make them look as they should in a moment. Um, but before we do that, we have we can see here our material list. And if we highlight the ground material and then look up here, we can see that the material is now using the Valve VR standard shader and not the Unity standard shader. And we can confirm that by clicking on some of these other materials and you can see that they're all using the, the valve shader. So 
so they've all been converted, um, but they do need to be tweaked because again here my ground material, I don't want it to, to be looking specular and if I rotate the camera angle you can see that there's, there's quite a bit of specular reflection happening on, on this ground material. So I want to tweak the material to get rid of that. So if we start here from the top, um, I guess the first one would be that I don't want the ground to be a metallic type of material, I want it to be a blend fong material. Down here you can see the option uh, render back faces, which I've already mentioned previously. Um, but if I rotate my camera angle to be underneath the ground, you can see here that the ground disappears. Um, if, and I don't want to do that to the ground, but if I did want the ground to be rendered uh, on both sides, I would turn this on. And now when I rotate the camera to be below the ground level, you can see I can see the texture applied to that mesh. But in this case, I didn't want the back face of that particular material to be rendered, so I'll just turn that off again. And like I've already mentioned before, uh, the albedo is using the this texture map, and the, this swatch color has to be set to white. And remember, if it's set to anything but white, you'll you'll get a tint applied to the texture. So just make sure that that's set to white. And now we'll just run through some of these settings. So here, I don't want this dirt to be glossy, so I will just bring this down back down to zero and, and if I uh, rotate my camera angle you can see in fact let's just fiddle with that gloss value you can see that the, it does make a difference but it hasn't totally fixed the issue of this material looking like it has a little bit of specularity to it uh, and that and that comes down to these two settings here you have reflectance minimum and reflectance maximum so and the reflectance maximum is visible here in this uh, edge highlight that's happening so if I take the this value here from 1 down to 0 uh, over here in this window you should see that specularity sort of slowly fade away so um, it's up to you to go through these settings and work out what works best for you um, and then go through and, and do changes to, to all the rest of the materials. Now for materials like the um, metal plate, I have bump maps and normal, normal maps, and so they can be applied into, into these slots here, the normal map um, slot, or, or even an occlusion map into here. So tweak the materials as, as need be. So now we've finished with the lab renderer. Oh, actually, no, we haven't but um, now we will tweak our directional lights. So over here, if you remember at the very beginning of the project, I uh, brought in this lighting tab. And if you don't have this lighting tab here, just go to window lighting and then just dock it down over here next to the inspector. Um, there are a few settings here in the lighting tab which we'll look at. Um, the first one here is you can see that it's using a skybox, which is the default skybox. Um, so that's just this plain old sky. Um, if you have a, a, a skybox with clouds and so on, this is where you would apply a cloudy uh, sky to your scene. Um, the sun here, it says none. And Basically, if this sets, says none, it will use the most dominant light that's in your scene over here. Now, I only have one line in my one light in my scene, which happens to be this one. So, even though this says none, it will actually use that light. Um, but why not just be explicit about it? So let's just drag and drop, drag and drop that directional light onto the sun slot here. Um, we are not going to be using baked in lighting. We're going to be using dynamic lighting. So we can uh, turn off the baked lighting option here. Now, you notice here there's this, this um, lighting setting here is set to auto. Uh, what this refers to is if we are using a baked in lighting, and then as our geometry changes, Unity will automatically update the baked lighting solution. Um, now, it's not doing that now because we haven't set up our scene for to, to be able to do baked lighting. And I won't do that as part of this project. But, and also I've, I've, I've had a few, I haven't wrapped my head around how this best works. Um, and I've even had it crash my computer and it takes overnight to render. So it's, um, I've got to work out how, how to use it best. But if you were to use baked lighting, you would have to enable it here. And then you would also have to, um, over here in the inspector, you would have to you would have to set the light to a static light 
I think it needs to be set to static. But most importantly, you would have to set all of your geometry to also be static. And as soon as you, you as, if I was to, and in fact, I can, I can just click on the parent folder and go static, and then all of the sub folders would become static. That would be an easy way to do it, rather than going into these individual elements and going, making them static. Um, I don't want to press the static button because as soon as I, I press the static button, um, this automatic option here would instantly start rendering the global or the baked lighting solution. And as I say, um, I don't know why, but it takes many hours and sometimes crashes my system. So um, you would have to do that to use the global lighting, but we're not using global lighting in our project. So I'll turn that off and then it doesn't matter whether this is automatic or not. So uh, that's pretty much all we need to set up in our uh, lighting tab. We'll, we'll still play with some of these numbers in a second. But um, let's first address the directional light in our scene. So here, if we rotate our scene, you can see the, the directional light is down here at three meters above the zero, zero origin. Um, now, Unity's standard shader, the actual position of the, the light source doesn't matter. It's only the angle or the vector that defines the direction of the sun or, or the directional light. With the lab renderer, the position of the actual light source does seem to make a difference. Um, so if I move, so the reason we only have this partial shadow here is because the the light source is is originating from this spot and only generating shadows from here down. So if we, if we want shadows to encompass our whole scene, we would have to move it back beyond our scene. Um, before I do that, I will firstly rotate the sun so that it um, is coming from an angle that I want. So over here we have our move gizmo and then we have the rotate gizmo. So I can rotate the sun to be coming from where I want it to. And then I'll go back to move and I will move it up into the sky and make sure, and in fact, I might even rotate a, a little bit more. And then move it a, a little bit further back. So, so we've rotated our sun and moved it into position. And now we will start to consider some of these settings. Uh, probably the first setting that I might do is over here in the shadow type resolution. Um, I'll set that to very high. And then down here in the valve real time light, I the shadow resolution, I will set that to 8K. And then finally, you can see we st we're still seeing artifacts here. And now these artifacts come from the fact that we need to set the shadow radius and the shadow range. So basically, if you imagine a cylinder emanating from the position of the light source, and that cylinder has to encompass our entire scene. So this artifact is simply because the camera is more than 100 meters away from this portion of, of the scene. So if we increase the range of the light source, so in other words, we're making the cylinder longer, so maybe if I increase that to 200 meters, and then, and that's pretty pretty good. But the radius, I don't know. Let's say in the future I add some geometry out here. Um, the radius may not be enough to encompass all of the geometry out here. So let's just set our radius to about 200 meters uh, as well. So you'll need to play with these numbers to suit your model. At all the size of your model, um, but that's but that's about it. We are now set with our project. With the, the lighting is set, um, and we're finished with this video. In the next video, we will talk about um, viewing our project in the Vive headset, 
and I might just touch on a few issues that we need to watch out for. So that's it for now, and thanks. See you next time. Bye.